Hello open source silicon enthusiasts and welcome to another quick news update. Let's get started with a really important bit of news which is about the ongoing investment into the semiconductor industry and you probably know in the US there's a 50 billion dollars pledged and in the European Union there's 50 billion euros pledged and the chips JU has asked uh, Fossey Foundation to help draft a roadmap towards open source EDA. Um, we did a talk at AllConf about it. There's been a webinar, there's been multiple groups involved, including GoIT, and me and Stefan have been leading this latest iteration uh, to come up with this roadmap. Now, we've got quite a long way by talking to a lot of experts in the field, people who are already involved in open source EDA, but we now have this op opportunity for people to feedback from the community. And we've been plugging this on LinkedIn and on AllConf, but I just also wanted to mention it here. So if you want to get involved, you can check the PDF document, the current version here, and then give us your feedback with a feedback form. Um, so we're looking at about 0.1% of that 50 billion investment, which is still kind of 50 million, which could mean a lot for the open source EDA tools. So if you want to influence how that money is spent in the future, uh, then fill in the form. One of the most frequent requests I receive over the years is, when are you going to make an analog course? And if you've been paying attention, you know I've been learning this stuff. I've been taping out maybe 10 or 11 designs on the last tiny tape out set of analog. And I've just completed three beta tests of my new analog course. So I've got a new link up here. If you want to find out more about the analog course, uh, check out this page and tickets are on sale now. I'm also working on more free resources for Tiny Tape Out and we do have a big section using SillyWiz, the tool I made with Uri Shaked, to learn about lithography and how the layers interact and how transistors work, uh, which are split across these uh, multiple different sections building up to building a, a CMOS inverter. But I wanted something shorter and sweeter that we can use for um, in real life trainings. So I now have a quick introduction to SillyWiz where you start learning, you draw and simulate a MOSFET, and then you, uh, you get the simulation. So it's just one page. It should take maybe 15 or 20 minutes to go all the way through. And at the end, you'll have a much better understanding of how MOSFETs work and how they are drawn in uh, lithography and reproduced. So um, I'll put the link in the description below of the video. If you want to try it out, then please let me know how you got on. Okay, event news now. Next week, I'm gonna be in Munich for DVCon. If any of you are DVCon or in Munich and you want to say hi, then just look out for me. I'll be wearing my hat and my gold chain. In a few more weeks, I'll be heading to California, starting off in Los Angeles for the Hackaday Supercon. Then I'll be heading down to San Diego for a big tiny tape out workshop with UCSD and then heading up to the Bay Area for another tiny tape out workshop. And we're also gonna do an open source silicon enthusiast meetup, have a, have a meal, have a drink. So if you're interested to take part in any of those events, um, then let me know. If you're interested in taking part in the Bay Area meetup, then fill in the form that I've linked in the description. Tape out news now, and I'll start off with the demo scene competition that we ran for Tiny Tape Out 8. That was really good. We had about 35 entries, and I was really blown away by some of the uh, incredible complexity and quality people managed to fit into just two tiles. I don't want to uh, give away too much because I'm doing some uh, interviews with the people who submitted the designs, and I'll, I'll play more of the demos later, but let's just take a look at one of my favorites. <laughs> Really awesome one by Andy Sloan. Many people use the VGA Playground, which is a very cool tool for playing around with graphics. So it runs real time in your browser and you can just make changes to the Verilog and see how it is changed immediately. There's the beginnings of some audio support and people use this to help them um, iterate. And Ray, who was one of the other entrants, I think he put even two or three uh, entrants in, uh, put his drop demo into the system. So that's now a preset and you can watch his whole uh, demo um, on in your web browser. Uh, really fantastic work. Amazing to see what people can fit into just such a small space of ASIC area. So we're expecting Tiny Tape Out 6 chips back in the next few weeks. Uh, there's been a shuttle update status on the eFabulous side 
and the chips are now in packaging so that normally takes a couple of weeks um, we've already pushed this back a little bit the the date expected because there were delays from the foundry uh, if you submit it to Tiny Tape Out 6, then keep an eye on your inbox. You'll be getting an email from us soon asking you for your address so we know where to ship to. I'm also going to be using my new scope from Keysight. Thanks very much, Keysight, to do some bring up and testing of the analog designs on Tiny Tape Out 6. So I'll be doing that with Sylvain Minot and we'll release a video on this channel. So stay tuned for that. Tiny Tape Out 9 is closing in 31 days. If you want to get involved, then do that soon. We are expecting, due to these workshops we're running in California, that we're going to fill up quite a lot at the end. So if you want a PCB, good to get in early. You may also know that we've started working with IHP. They're a European foundry based in Germany, and I visited them for a fab tour. So if you want to see the inside of a clean room, check out the video. It's a really good one. We've got a couple of experimental shuttle services running and then we're going to run a public service in 2025. So we've already done the first super experimental one and the second one is going to be in November and that's going to be open to people who've already submitted onto a tiny tape out shuttle. So if you've previously submitted on a shuttle, you want to try out a new PDK and help us test the process, then go to the Discord, um, check out the TTIHP OP2 tape out channel and you can find all the information from there. We've got a different Verilog template. It's digital only for now and we won't be selling the chips. We're not even sure if we're going to be putting them on boards or not. As I said, it's an experimental one. But if you do want to help us out, that would be really appreciated and we'll be able to test your designs at least. So I was recently asked what my favourite thing about the internet was and after some thought I replied that it's all the incredible science channels on YouTube. It's really amazing to be able to get access to the kind of information that we can uh, have now just on YouTube for free watching these videos and I wanted to recommend a video. I've recommended their channel before, Projects in Flight, and they're working on DIY semiconductor fabrication. And they're now up to the point where they're working on dopant. So this latest video is making a spin on dopant and they managed to get the price down so that it's accessible for the hobbyist. So check that video out. And finally, I'm super happy that I've got my ASIC chain necklace working again. So with some love from Adam and Pat, I've managed to change out the flat flex cables to uh, proper plug-in JST style connector cables and they are way more rugged. So I'm expecting the chain to last well and you'll be seeing me wearing it at upcoming conferences. So thanks for watching, have a great winter and I hope to see you tape out on Tiny Tape Out 9.